I want to talk to you about an Epic GPS, the Garmin eTrex 30X. They don't actually make these anymore, but they now make the 32X, which is basically the same thing as this, except it's got nicer maps on board. So you might want to check that out. But the good thing about this is that it's got a rugged casing. This GPS has flown off my bicycle several times and is still intact. Unless you're, unless the previous owner is like absolutely a nut, or in fact, just drop it like that. You see that? It's still working. You probably can't see that, but it is working. The cool thing is you can just throw this off. It probably could be run over. Well, I don't know if I, I, should, I would run over it with a vehicle or not, but it could be hit by the side of the tire of the vehicle and still work. It's a really great GPS. I've seen it come off and it's, uh, it's cousin, the, the little brother. The E-Trex 10X, the E-Trex 10, and it still works. The problem, though, is you do need to get a good mount. This mount, it's not worth a flip. So if you do get one of these, you need to get like a, put like a string through here. I have a post on, on uh, my uh, website about that. You loop a string through this D-ring, and then you loop it around your uh, uh, handlebars. And then if it does come flying off of this mount, then at that point, that will usually catch it. Another trick you can do, because the battery life on this thing is so long, I think they said 25 hours, and you may be able to get longer if you have better batteries, It uh, you can actually duct tape it down to your bicycle. So this is an amazing GPS, and I have to have a cheat sheet here because I, I need a teleprompter. I'm not awesome like President Trump who can just like rattle off rattle off and talk to people without even having notes. But it's got a rugged casing and it still works. I use this for the Dirty Kanza. Why what is it doing now? I use this for the Dirty Kanza 200. Now I think it's called uh, Unbound Gravel 200. And I've also used this yesterday. Uh, no, no, a week ago. A week ago today for a 230 mile plus bike ride. I think I had like 10,000 feet of elevation. It was all paved roads on that case though. But anyways, I hope I didn't say something wrong. But it was 230 plus miles. And you know what? This thing is so awesome, it registers right through the seat pack. I took this road bike, because it was on paved trails, and I just snuck it right here in this sneak seat pack, right back behind here. It registered underneath the water bottles and underneath my body. Now, I used this for navigation. Now, I could have used this for navigation, but I didn't have a good mount, so I just went ahead and used this old E-Trix 800, which I got from an awesome friend when I bought this bike used a while back when I was getting into USAC racing. So, the nice thing about this thing is it can be used for many different purposes. I use it to go jogging, uh, I, and to record my jogging. I, I use it for gravel grinding. Um, and I've actually used it for swimming. This thing is so robust, even though it's only got an IPX7 waterproof rating, which means it's not technically waterproof, it can survive, uh, it, it survived the washing machine in my house. I forgot, left it in my pocket, didn't check my pockets like Jennifer would have told me to, and what did I do? I threw this expensive GPS, which I bought back when she was living with me, I threw this expensive GPS in the washing machine, went off, forgot about it, pulled it out. My gut sank to my heart because I believe I was training for Ironman Florida at that time. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Well, I gave it a few days to dry out. Guess what? It was fine. So after a few days of dry out, it did have a little bit of moisture underneath the screen, but it was still okay. Now, one thing I do, I have like an armor all per screen protector on here, just in case, just to protect the screen. Those are pretty cheap, 10 bucks, whatever. You just make sure you mount it on correctly so that you don't get bubble air bubbles or anything like that. But that's just an extra level of protection. You probably won't need that, but it, the nice thing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm presuming that if the armor all whatever screen protector fails, you can peel it off somehow, maybe and then put another one on. But I have no scratches on this screen that I'm, I'm aware of. So combined with the rugged Garmin um, casing and, the, um, and the, the screen protector, I have no issues with this GPS. So it survived the washing machine. It has a super long battery life. I said 25 hours. 
Well, what's even more cool is if you're out in the boondocks and you, for whatever reason, you didn't charge your batteries well enough what, or whatever, you don't get 25 hours out. Guess what? You just uh, pull this D-ring off right here. AA batteries. Awesome. AA. Just pull those out, put those back in, and start this pumpy back up, and your ride is still continuous. You're not going to lose part of your ride while you're going. This GPS, which is awesome and does has better maps, slightly better maps than this one built in. I don't know if the previous owner put the maps on them or whether they came with the GPS, but it's great. This is great for navigation, but it's not that it, it died after like 12 hours, even with me turning it off and on to, to kind of try to save batteries. Somewhere around 12, 14 hours. Yeah, I know, I'm slow. I took a long time to get my 230 miles out. This GPS lasted the whole time. I just left it in this seat pack and didn't even turn it off. I checked on it every now and then to make sure it was registering, and sure was. That gets me to the other, uh, the other point. It will register inside a swim buoy. So, you don't have to actually buy a GPS and an expensive watch. This is a watch from Walmart, no GPS integrated, to track your swims, unless you're doing them in a swimming pool, in which case the GPS is not going to kick in anyways. You're going to be using a Celeroner because almost all GPSs will not work through uh, buildings. This, this one included, unfortunately. But we'll get to the, 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 how accurate this GPS is later. Um, unless you're inside of a building, you're, you're not going to get, uh, if you're inside a building, you're not going to get a good uh, signal anyways. But this will register through this swim buoy. So if you're going on a swim, you don't necessarily have to have a fancy watch. You can put this in these Walmart snack, snack bags. And the nice thing is this fits right in here. It slides right in here. It seals were nice and tight, double zipped. Make sure you get all the air out. And then under that, I would wrap it with a couple other, a couple of other, other bags. But when you put it in this swim buoy and inflate it, the, the chances of water getting into this swim buoy are very unlikely. This is a Zone Three swim buoy. It's one of the biggest ones they have. I would get one through through Zone Three. These things keep they they do tend to lose, it's twenty eight liter. They tend to lose air over time, but not enough that it's a safety issue. I don't actually use this swim buoy very much for safety reasons except to be visible. But if you do cramp out there, which I did a lot when I first started swimming uh, in the open water, um, you can grab onto this and float on it. But you have to be somewhat skilled because if you're dead tired, exhausted, it won't work. You're just going to fall off. But if you have any amount of energy in you left and your legs are just cramped and you don't want to just use your arms, you just crawl up on this sucker and lay on it and you'll be good. But the main point is you can throw your gear back here, your, your wallet, everything, your ID, all that, and you can put this in here and it will register. You just have to make sure that you time when you put it in and when you take it out. So when you get on, what is it, uh, Garmin, uh, Garmin Base Camp or whatever tool you use to edit your GPXs, you can cut out the part where you were putting it in and taking it out so that it doesn't mess up your time. You want to make, get accurate swim times. And I've noticed that this does, I'm a very slow swimmer, it does accurately record my swim times. So that's a real good bonus. And it's great because I didn't have to buy an expensive watch on top of this, and at that time I was kind of broke anyway. So yes, you can use this for swimming too. Swimming, hiking, running, bicycling. Um, it will register inside a swim pack. It also has GPS and Russian, I guess, Glon, Glonass, Glonass. I don't know. Excuse me if I pronounced that wrong. But the cool thing is, if the GPS is jacked up, jacked up like it was, I guess, a couple of years ago when everybody was trying to raid Area 51. I know the day, the day, around the day where people were going to raid Area 51, I just noticed the GPS is mysteriously blew out in my area. Of course, I'm here in Arkansas, and I'm nowhere close to Arizona, but it's just, I just, just found it funny. So you can turn on the Russian GP, the Russian version of GPS and use that if you have to, or you can use both. So it's a really good tool in case one of the two is blown out. So this makes it 
awesome if you're in a survival type situation. Um, you can uh, add maps to this GPS. It has a fairly decent map on board, but if you happen to get the newer uh, eTrex 32X, I believe it has even nicer topological maps that you can use. And it's very useful if, say, you're going to do something, do gravel grinding. You know, because in gravel grinding, the roads aren't marked all that great, and, you know, you might want to see the hills as they're coming up, and... Anyways, I would have, I would have liked to have used maps on the Dirty Kanza, but instead I just used the integrated map that was already on here, so I didn't get a whole lot of topological data, but it was able to keep me navigated. The main thing is you need to keep zoomed in. If you're zoomed in enough, you will know when you get off track. This does not have turn-by-turn -turn di directions. The biking GPSs, most of them do have turn-by-turn -turn directions. But if you keep zoomed in and you keep on the map view, you will not get too far off course. Just pay attention. Um, it does support a heart rate monitor. So that's a really cool thing. Um, but it does not support a speed sensor, which is a huge downer if you're on rollers. I've got a speed sensor on, well, I took it off because I switched wheels. Is that the ride I went off last week? I used a fancier wheel that I got off of. Craigslist from a professor at U, U of A. Uh, he's, he's a serious athlete also. And anyways, I um, swapped out wheels so I don't have my speed sensor in there, but I was using my speed sensor so that on, when I, on rollers so that I could get a relative idea for my power output because unless you have like a Wahoo kicker, you, you really don't a lot of times know how much power you're putting out. And that's the disadvantage of using rollers, because a lot of rollers, unless they're smart rollers, don't have uh, integrated power. And so you, you don't know how much, what your effort is. And so this does have support of speed sensor. And when you're on rollers, the roller resistance is static, because I use like 2.25 drums. And then I have like the headwind fan, and it's open all the way. So I know, generally speaking, how much power I'm putting out, and there's even a chart on the Kreitler website, I got them used, even a chart on the Kreitler website where you can approximate your, uh, what is it, your, uh, your, your wattage. You can't do that with this. I think the best this has is cadence mon 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 cadence sensor. Well, that's not going to do you any good, because uh, if you're in a different gear, your power ratio changes, but if you have a speed and you're on rollers where the resistance is static, then you generally get a pretty good idea of what kind of power you're putting out. So that's the only real downer of this GPS. No power meter, and this does support a power meter, but I can't afford one, and no speed sensor. So you're, you're kind of up the creek there. But, uh, you know, if you happen to see someone that has one of these on eBay, for, uh, then uh, you're pretty good, it's a pretty good chance for, like, say, $200. You'd probably be good going off and getting it. You'd probably be okay, because unless the person that owned this was just absolutely, completely abusive, I mean, like, really, really, really abusive, and didn't just have temper issues, then... <laughs> then this, his GPS is probably fine, okay? I said, like I said, I've had this thing flown, fly off, and it's bro little brother, the 70, I lost the 70 because of stupid mount, but I've had it and its little brother flow off, fly off several times, and they're still fine. Survive the washing machine. Do not go dunk this in your bathtub just to check it out. I would not trust that level of water resistance in this GPS, but it is, Fairly water, it is reasonably water resistant because it survived the bathtub, just like an Iron Man watch I had, a Walmart Iron Man watch, Timex watch that I had. It survived the the uh, washing machine. So, and then uh, if you, they're still making the Etrex 10, which is black and white. I don't think it has any integrated maps, not even the integrated map that's on this one. And you can get for about 110, I think, back in the day. On, on on special, you could get it on eBay for like seventy bucks. I mean, it was so awesome. You don't have to have the maps if you get on if you get on Strava or you get on uh, Basecamp and put your route in and then plug it in here and put it put it into the GPS ahead of time. Then you can follow the route that you predestined. 
but you will run into a problem if you if you take a wrong turn and you decide to shortcut it it's handy to have some maps in there so you could get yourself back on track without having to completely backtrack so and that's where this one comes this 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 one comes in Andy the eTrex 30x is because you do actually have some extra maps and as I said the 22x the newer 22x and the 32x which are the same price as this was I guess uh, back when it came out have the nicer topological maps now if you look on eBay and you do have to happen to see someone that has an eTrex 30x there's a chance that they may actually give you their SD card with maps on it and then you're getting an even better deal chances of this GPS breaking are very very slim I think this one's like three years old okay I it, well more than three years old I don't know I don't remember when I first got it. It, it I don't remember having to put updates on it I don't remember getting Chinese viruses it just works if you want a GPS that just works in nearly every situation even on a dirty cans or upward gravel 200 now it's called or an upward gravel XL which is what 350 miles where you're just nuts I mean you gotta be nuts to do that then then you need this GPS forget the power meter leave it at home you don't need it use your power meter on your Wahoo kicker or your smart trainer or whatever but when you're out doing your gravel grinding you don't need it you just need to know your average speed how fast you completed the course and that will get you through the day so highly recommended GPS I hope I didn't say anything correct I would suggest you get this GPS because it absolutely kicks Oh man!